think a very warm welcome to all of you from all of us here from at, at the Paramount Group. I am Gagan Kapoor. I am a marketing consultant, and with me is Mr. Manjit Singh Saini, who is the CEO of Paramount Instruments. Welcome, Manjit. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. It always gives me great pleasure to be with all the people who are so eager to learn. Welcome, everyone. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much, Manjit. And yes, this particular session is going to be focusing on color matching in textiles. Right. Our topic for today is. color matching for textiles made simple and today what we are going to do is we are going to try and answer all possible questions around this very specific topic of color matching which i know is bothering a lot of people because of which people are facing a lot of rejections people are facing a lot of issues and today i hope that within the next uh, one and a half hours you will go home go to back to your offices with a lot of clarity on how effective color matching should be done right and by the way this particular uh, program what we are doing uh, is uh, a part of a series of webinars and sessions which we at paramount have been doing for the community for the industry so that they can make their processes better so a very warm welcome to all of you one more time and uh, what i would like to request right if you can uh, listen to us and if you are excited please type in ex uh, yes in the chat box yes in the chat box so that we know that you are equally excited as we are to talk about color matching i see there are a lot of yeses started coming in raja mohammad Mar Mar Jahan Akhtar, Jayant Kumar, wonderful! Thank you so much, everyone. A lot of you have already joined in. So, uh, it's time to go ahead and talk about our session. But before that, let me uh, introduce the speaker for today, Mr. Manjit Singh Saini. Uh, and uh, so, Manjit, uh, as uh, you know, uh, is uh, uh, and Manjit is of course the CEO of Paramount. and paramount is a very well known company in the textile instruments in india mr manjeet did his schooling from uh, gnps punjabi bag where he was appointed the first head boy of the school and also has stopped the accountancy in the 12th grade he did his bcom from delhi university and joined paramount group as a management trainee mr manjeet has undertaken textile uh, testing trainings from usa and uk he has also undertaken various management trainings at i am ahmedabad and mdi gurgaon he has traveled to uk usa and japan on specialized ceo missions and leadership trainings a widely traveled man mr manjeet has traveled to more than 63 countries across the globe talking about paramount in 1992 it diversified into textile testing instruments and there has been no looking back uh after that and as if you all know paramount group has and was established in 1964 so that is the heritage it brings today mr saini mr manjeet singh is the ceo and executive director of paramount group paramount has more than 100 instruments for textile industry with latest iot uh, internet of things based instruments paramount today is regarded as the pioneers and leaders in textile testing domain under his leadership Paramount has further diversified into QC instruments in other domains like footwear, leather, artificial leather, automotive, non-woven, paper, cardboard, and packaging industry. So, as you can see, Paramount is ever expanding into various domains just so they can make a difference to a lot more domains than textile as well, right? Manjeet, uh, and since because, uh, let me just tell you at this point that since 1964, Paramount Group has been on a mission to help companies grow exponentially. through quality control and his hobbies manjeet's hobbies are yoga reading biographies and inspirational books and as if you have been to paramount office you will see at least three rooms full of books which manjeet has already read right uh, and then mr manjeet has been conducting various sessions on quality control at jd institute of technology amity school of fashion nift tit bhivani etc he has also been conducting webinars and today is yet another webinar he is con uh, he is conducting and by the way this is the third webinar in the series and we will keep coming back to you every month 
with a different topic life is beautiful keep on enjoying it is his mantra for living a happy and energized life here i present to you mr manjeet singh saini who you will always find smiling and super positive welcome manjeet one more time thank you so much thank you so much gagan for such a wonderful you know introduction really appreciate that and once again you know welcome everyone it always gives us immense pleasure you know that you guys are taking out your time and then just to learn beautiful things they say you know learning i think is the most important trait a person can imbibe in life because people the leaders they're always great learners yeah go over to you gagan <laughs> great thank you so much so let me tell you how this webinar is going to go right we will spend about 30 minutes in uh, we have kind of decided on some of the questions which are, i know and we all know that are generally asked in this particular domain so we have identified few questions which we will answer but let us tell you that these questions or this session is not limited to our questions this session is for all of you who are in the room and you have any challenges and manjeet has committed to give his time to answer all possible questions which come from here today so you will see a q and a box at the bottom or top of the screen from the kind of place you are logging in a mobile or a, or a, a laptop so if you have any question which comes to your mind put it in the q and a box and you will your all your questions will be answered and by the way this engagement this question answers and being on the chat and engagement helps who helps you as well because all our engaged participants will and do get awards right so let me tell you our first webinar that happened we had three winners which whom we had announced in the last session in the session number 2 let me just tell you their names again the winners of the first webinar were vinay singh rashor from tesca group uh, ms anuradha from silk asia and mr ashok malik from uh, centrex group and by the way they all have been sent as an award personalized pig glass worth 3600 rupees each right they all have got this award already and by the way it i take pleasure in announcing now the uh, award winners the engagement award winners three winners from session number 2 which we did on fabric inspection that session was that those winners are my, mr mahendra patel from anish india mr alok sharma who's a textile consultant and mr narendra thakur who's from tynor india right all three of you congratulations you also are going to get a personalized big glass which will uh, be sent to you our team is going to be in touch with you for details and it will be sent to you uh, very very soon so with this i take now pleasure in coming on to our set of questions right and uh, so uh, manjeet my first question you know as we say as simon sinek says start with a why so i am going to ask you this first question why at all is color matching required in textile what is the need of color matching uh thank you so much again and i'll say this is again a million dollar question you know because we need to be starting with a why and uh, this is very very important because uh, actually millions of colors they exist in the world color is one of the most fundamental aspect of textile design which contributes greatly to the overall if visual effect of a finished fabric right so we need to understand the why in a little deeper way so that we can relate to it color matching is a vital process you know which ensures uh, continuing of color from master standard to all subsequent production batches yeah the thing is we have to make sure that whatever we we make as a standard batch it should go all the way to all the production batches and uh, let me cover a little bit about color perception which is is again a very important thing colors my friends you all know are perceived differently from person to person yeah both technically and also from an emotional point of view that is why color matching becomes so actually important for this uh, 
let me touch up, touch upon you know very very simple things and i'll try to give very simple things in this thing not going not going towards the technical aspect so that everyone can understand it human eye has three perceptors right each of these perceptor is so sensitive and it is it is sensitive to the colored light which is again red light and the green light and the blue light which is called rgb we all know about this rgb right as light hits an object these receptors relay the information to the brain yeah and then determining the color with over a million possibilities color matching actually can be difficult yeah that is why it is very important that we need to understand the concept of color matching in a in a deeper way in a, in a beautiful way so that we can relate to it we can analyze it and now another psychological thing a person's psychological reaction to color is what makes color matching in product design you know we design so many things we design beautiful garments we design beautiful uh, things that color is a type of art similar to music poetry or a dance we all need to understand that therefore it should aim to please the senses and color should evoke emotion that becomes very very important and uh, we we all know you know the red background with golden arches you know of mcdonalds see even a small child will understand the whenever he sees the mcdonalds he wants to go there because the color is so visible it is so beautifully done similarly we all know about starbucks starbucks is there in india we know that green color how beautifully a single color they have made it and how they have made the whole starbucks into a international icon so with all of these things these are very very specific things in textiles we see lot of problems as you were rightly saying in the beginning a lot of problems happens when the color doesn't match and then we need to do lot of different things it has to be redyeing reprocessing to understand and to make sure that that thing doesn't happen i think it is very very important that we need to understand the color matching concept and so gogan i can keep on you know going on like this for it's giving so many examples but i think we have about 30 35 minutes time so we need to touch upon everything and we will love to have the questions coming from everyone then yeah okay. all right <laughs> thank you so much manjeet and i see couple of people are talking about a low volume but uh, i am also a participant on the other side and i do hear him clearly uh, so please do check uh, in case there is a uh, there is an issue with your speaker volume uh but i do see uh, hear him cl uh, clearly uh and uh, uh, so manjeet thank you so much for uh, talking about the importance of color matching talking about rgb and how uh, it is critical from the perception uh, what we need to do uh my my next question to you is that as in textiles uh and because we are talking about this as a very foundational thing first and then we will go advance i would request you to please tell us about the basics in color matching in the textile sector what are the basics which are there definitely i'm going to do that so i'll also request you to make the things you know more interesting and people can relate to it you can even start you know that uh, small presentation which we have made so that both ways you know people can grasp it right from absolutely when yes i was talking yeah okay. talking about the uh, basics of the i'll be talking about that i will love to see everyone you know going through the whole thing wonderful i uh, let do that let me my share presentation okay uh, can you see the presentation manjeet yeah yeah i can see the presentation it is perfectly well see the eye everyone you know will try to see the things in in its own way because the color perception technically as well as from emotional point of view we see things in a very different way so let's go to the next slide now because i need to be explaining about uh, yeah the basics i need to back to the school yeah and try to you know touch upon the things color matching you know is a is a process in which pigments dyes we are we talking specifically in connection to the textile special effect colors are combined to achieve a special color in a specific polymer let us go back to the school and see colors are of three types you know we all remember primary secondary and tertiary colors we all know that and now the primary colors are three which we are, we covered red yellow and green and they are the parent colors yeah and then 
we come to the second category which is secondary colors there are again three colors but they are the colors you know which are which are made by mixing the primary colors say for example the orange will be the combination of red plus yellow yeah and the purple will be the combination of blue plus red which is again a primary color and the green will be combination of yellow plus blue secondary colors are made by combining any of the three primary colors i think this is also very very simple i'm trying to keep it very very simple and then tertiary colors are actually six in which we have magenta and vermilion and violet and teal and amber and chatheus now these six colors also are there by the combination of primary and secondary colors now then we have the concept of which you see basics about color matching hue is one thing then tint is another thing and then tone and as well as the shade but why i'm trying to touch upon these uh, things is because these are the very basic foundational things which we need to understand hue if i say is pretty much synonymous with what we exactly mean when we say the word color it is the actual color in the in the outer you know circle you can see and then and this is made by primary and secondary colors as we move down the tint is a is the opposite of a you know shade the shade you can see this is the, the fourth place but tint is something you know when we add to the hue the original color the white it becomes the tint yeah in the color sapphire when we go when we see the tone the tone is different tone is darker or lighter the tone comes when the hue the pure color is added with white as well as black see this this particular thing shows exactly what i'm talking about and the last one of the list is the shade in which the original color the pure color hue is mixed with the black so these four things are the things you know which we which tells something totally basic about what people may not even understand what is hue what is what is the tint what is tone and this diagram very nicely explains when somebody is talking about the tone you know it is original color plus white and black when somebody is talking about shade it is original color plus black right so this is something which is let me just see they are saying the sound is less let me try to increase the sound if possible but i think yeah the sound is maximum on my side so this is yeah. another, another thing you know now we go to the next one let's go to the next slide please little more some basic concepts again so that you can understand then we go to the other technical thing c m y k everyone knows i think all the uh, participants which are here they will all understand c is for cyan and then m is for magenta yellow is uh, y is for yellow and k i think you may not be knowing actually key k is for the key which is black color yeah just see when the, all the things are done then it becomes a k and then the second concept which is again very important rgb everyone knows rgb as well red green and blue now these are the red basic which uh, makes you makes the foundation of how we need to understand and how do we need to analyze the color so again uh, i can take gagan i can take a session on cmyk CM the whole <laughs> session of two hours but uh, these are the very basic concepts just to the part so that people can understand when i talk about rgb when i talk about cmyk yeah all right wonderful wonderful so uh, manji thank you so much for uh, talking about the basics on uh, on uh, color matching now that was something which was definitely critical for we go into the depth of it uh now now that we have understood why color matching is important and even the basics right let's get to the third point which is that how do we really ensure accurate color matching now this is again again a very big challenge how do we really ensure that we get the exact color now this is a very very important uh, thing you know it's a very important parameter how do you do accurate color matching i'll request you to please go in for the uh, next slide please and then yes to make them understand these are very critical things yeah uh, how to ensure accurate color matching is a we need to understand everyone's perception of color is slightly different yeah i may see a yellow brighter yellow 
and the other person may say no it is it is a dull yellow this kind of perceptions are always there therefore light boxes which we call them as color matching cabinets or color matching booths they are used to do accurate color matching now these boxes provides a standardized environment these boxes do not do anything and i think most of the people who are there with us they must have all worked with color matching boxes because most of the people belong to textile fraternity and they they must might have used one or the other color matching box surely and if you people have actually used it i will love to see a yes coming from your side so that i can understand what i am referring to is understood by you you can just put on the chat yes if you have worked with the color matching booth because this is something which is very very important yeah manoj kumar says yes thank you so much manoj ji because most of the people will be working with color matching boxes so that we can do perfect ratish thank you so much for that and antara khairi thank you so much really appreciate uh, so let me let me tell you we need to see that the lights in the color matching are you know actually giving the true colors i'm going to go a little in detail about the color matching cabinets as well and uh, also about how do they provide even jasveer says he has worked arpita says she has worked that is that is very nice really i i understand i know now I'm talking to people who understand the concept of color matching and the boxes very well thank you so much for that now this is you, you can see a color matching cabinet here now this color matching cabinet provides an environment in which the color matching becomes very very easy it becomes it becomes accurate you know and we are talking about doing the accurate color matching now this particular unit which you are seeing is it has got six different light sources now when we when we you know purchase something we see them under different light sources so for example if it is the first light is called d65 and you must all know the exact lights also and their importance as well sometimes you know we we do certain things we don't even know the uh, you know the deeper uh, systems about that but then we keep on doing it but let me try to explain what are the light sources and what what are the their importance what is the importance of them say for example the first light is d65 now d65 is the light which we get outside you might have seen you know ladies who go in the showroom then they will see uh, the fabric and then they will go out to see the fabric in the sunlight as well now that particular light is the d65 light then there is another light you know what we do is we put both the samples the the color matching when we do we put the sample which has come from the buyer and the sample which you have bought from your own dyer or from or you have done it in your own factory you know dyeing now you have to match them now they need to be matched very nicely so that your color matching is accurate right the first light is d65 this is a very important light the second light can be cwf that is a cool white fluorescent now you know we have to go yeah at the back yeah the second light is uh, cwf which is quite cool white fluorescent now cool white fluorescent is the light which we call as the store light in america right now in the store light we when, when they sell our garments which we export from here they are sold under that light so the buyer says i want the matching under d65 because the person will be moving in d65 most of the time but when he come there to purchase he will be purchasing under cwf so we want to make sure that cwf light the matching is also perfect then we have tl84 light which is again the uh, store light of europe you know when when they purchase things in europe it is through tl84 because they use tl84 in their showrooms and uv is a light specifically meant to check the different lots of white or any fluorescent dyes and inca a is something which is quite similar to sun so these are few of the lights which you all must understand yeah i understand vandana that there is ul30 as well that is also a light which is in a way is cwr cool white light also has 3000 lumens i'll be explaining that as well and cwf light also has 3000 lumens 
right? So that is why it is called U30. 30 is 3000 humans. Okay, now let's go to the next one. See, uh, again, next. Sorry. Yes. Now, please see, my friends, this beautifully explains about the whole concept of color, the color lumens. See, on this side, from 2000 K, K is Kelvin, yeah, the temperature. The temperature of a light is the actual color of the light. Please understand that. Yeah. From 2000, it comes to 2700 as it is moving. See, it is moving towards 3000. Uh, this is Vandana, this is 3000 K is the U30 and the CWF as well, please. 3005, that's 3500 K. Now, please see, friends, that from yellow, slowly, slowly it is becoming on the neutral side, the white side. Yeah. From 3500, it goes to 4000, which is, which is again uh, a cool white light. But when we talk about 3000 or U30, we even call it a warm white. See, the colors are warm on the left side. As we keep on moving, they keep on becoming neutral and then cool and the cooler as well. So 4000 is CWF light, which is yellow, little bit of brightness with whiteness. As we move towards 6000, 6500, which is daylight, it has gone towards cooler side, right? And then after that, it goes to extreme towards the snow side, you know, the cooler, the coldest side, 8000, 10,000. So this particular chart explains beautifully everything in regard to the accurate color matching with Kelvin temperatures. Normally, what we use is 2700 is the Inkai light. 3000, as was pointed out by Vandana, it is a U30 light. And then, U, then 3500 is the U35. That also is quite famous now. Some buyers want to go for the U35. 4000, when we go, it becomes a cool white. And then after that, it becomes uh, cooler and the bluish side. It keeps on moving towards that. So this, this particular chart explains everything about... Let's go to the next slide, please. Another one, one slide to be there. I'll, I'll, be, I'll be covering that thing as well. No problem. So these few things are the major things about which we need to understand that how nicely the more concept of ours is clear in regard to the color temperature and the lumens, the better color matching we can do. This is the way how to understand, you know, the U30 light and the CWF light and D65 light. The more we understand about them, the more accurate color matching can be done. So this is what again I'll say uh, in brief, in very brief. I'm trying to tell you know the, the yes. spirit color matching. Thank you so much, Manjeet. I think uh, what you mentioned just now are again very very critical elements to understand uh, what are buyers' expectations and how uh, for each fabric and the color you have to meet so many expectations, which is actually the critical part. Uh, right now, at this point of time, I see a few of the participants are raising hands. Uh, my request to you is uh, please hold on for another 10 minutes because we will be taking up many questions. But in the meanwhile, as I see, uh, Mr. Alok Kumar Sharma has already put in uh, uh, a, a message onto the Q&A box whereby the question is there. We will be taking this question very, very soon. If you have any questions, please type in your questions in the Q&A box and we will be taking up all the questions. So, Manjit, my next question to you is, uh, you've spoken about the basics and you've also spoken about the various kinds of lighting to uh, ensure the accurate lighting conditions and what all is needed and what kind of lights as we see on the screen at this point. Uh, what I want to now know is that how knowledge of color matching, which everyone must have, uh, can actually make a big difference in the garment export business, you know, uh, because I know there must be uh, many, many parameters. So why this knowledge is required and how can they, it impact their business? Again, a, a lot of billion, it's a billion dollar question. Let's go to the next slide and try to explain them how important it is, you know. 
See, okay. when we are doing the business, most of the, my friends here, they belong to export houses, they belong to, you know, mills, where they keep on finding the collaborations on a day-to-day -day basis. Unless and until we have the knowledge about the color matching, these kind of problems will keep on coming. And what is the end result of this problem? Rejections. And rejection is a very scary word. Unless and until we understand that what actually color matching is, what is the Newman, what is U30, as, as they were asking, what is the CWF light, what is the importance of it, we will keep on having, you know, the different, uh, you know, variations and the rejections will be there. So we should always know how to use a color matching cabinet in the most optimum way so that our rejections are to the minimum possible extent, right? And second, the second thing, you know, for which we really should know about the color matching uh, knowledge about that is, you know, it saves a lot of time and money. Say, for example, if we have a lot which has come and we have a small, small lot which, which has come and we checked it out and we saw, you know, the hue and the tone and all the things were coming out to be perfectly okay. We can tell him, you know, now you go in for the 10,000 meter lot as well. But in case we get a 10,000 meter lot done and then we check and we see in under D65 light, the, the difference is there in the color. Then we again have to rework on it. We have to again re-dye. We have to again do the reprocessing. So understanding of color matching, which can actually make very big differences, this because of this thing that it saves a lot of time and a lot of money. The third most important reason why you should have the knowledge of color matching is now just see. I have um, you know given a small example of daylight. NKA light and store light. Now, these three things, I think everyone is aware of. Daylight is the 6,500. You see, we have taken the picture in the exact, uh, you know, background, same background with the different lights. 6,500 is a whiter kind of, you know, thing which you can see, the expression. 2,700 is the NKA light, which is very, very close to the sun. In NKA light, you will always have the real red. You will see the real green. You will actually see the real depth of the color in an Inkai light. And in case of store light, where they want to have the combination of, you know, the white as well as brightness, then it becomes 4,000. And I can tell you many a times, and many of my friends here must have even experienced themselves that when they see a color match, when they're doing a color matching, when they see it under daylight, it is perfectly matching. The, the moment they go to Inkai light, they behave in a very different way. Colors, they are very, very, you know, uncertain. So the buyer who is there, you know, who, who will be taking maybe 100,000 shirts of yours or 500,000 bed sheets of yours, he wants to make it sure that the color which is visible to the naked eye under different light sources is exactly the same in Europe or in America or in Australia. That is why the detection of metamerism becomes very important when, you know, this is a very simple process. The color seems perfectly in one light and they do not seem, this too very, very different in other light. So these three things tells you a little bit about, about metamerism. Is, is the voice yes? What do you no, say? no, it's absolutely okay. It's absolutely okay, Manjeet. Okay, okay. That's Sorry. okay. Yes. Thank you so much. I just wanted to confirm, yeah, because this is something yeah. interesting topic and a person needs to understand, you know, a little deeper as well. Now, yes. three things you all know why the color matching, the knowledge of color matching is very important. You can detect metamerism, you can save a lot of time and money, and you can avoid the most important thing, which is rejections. You know, we don't want rejections anywhere. The third, the fourth thing is the color matching strengthens the trust of the buyer because he knows every time he sends you the sample, you do perfect color matching. And when it comes there, the matching is perfect. So the more trust of the buyer is, you know, gained, he becomes much, much more, uh, you know, easy with you doing business. He will definitely give you more business. And once the business grows, 
your company grows and the profitability as well as grows. This is but natural because buyer is very happy because he knows you have a color matching perfect mindset. And when everything happens, my friends, then we all belong to this category that we want to have peace of mind. That is the requirement of every human soul. We don't want problems to come. And at least this color matching concept will help you to have you know, lesser, lesser problems in your profession where you, when you have the knowledge about color matching. So Gagan, these things, I think the, the last point itself makes everything that once just go for the peace of mind and everything else will take care of itself because you'll be too happy then. <laughs> great, great. So Manjeet, I see how beautifully you have addressed a lot of challenges which day-to-day -day buyers uh, uh, you know, uh, face and then our, our exporters, friends, they are also facing these challenges and at times they don't know that, okay, my rejections are happening uh, and my order, I did not get the order uh, for that matter or I got the order and rejection happening, the next order is not coming. Uh, then we know that these are the problems which are there and with these simple methods, you could change all of it and take yourself to new business growth. Who would have expected that a simple thing or not a simple thing, rather an important thing like color matching can actually lead you to grow your business, which is even, even very important and wonderful. So great. Thank you so much, Manjeet, for sharing these very critical elements and the challenges what people are facing. Now, Manjeet, now I see that there are questions started coming in to the, uh, in the Q&A box already. And we have one last question before I get to these, these Q&As from uh, all our audience. Uh, uh, we all know that uh, whatever has been happening, there is always a scope of evolution. There is always a scope of uh, new technologies. And I know that if, uh, and internationally, world over, the industry, the buyers are getting more tech savvy. They want to, uh, they want more efficiency. So I would request you to talk about what kind of, future technology is now coming in the color matching segment. What our audience should be aware about the new technologies in this domain? Please, please help us with this. Surely, surely. Thank you so much. Again, a very important question. Uh, yes, for the next slide. And I want to touch upon three very, very basic concepts of uh, you know color matching. See, I told in the beginning that the color matching provides a controlled environment in which the color matching becomes very easy. The color matching box doesn't do anything. It provides you an environment in which the color matching, when you are doing the color matching, you can do it in a very perfect and accurate way. Now, I really want to, uh, you know, everyone to understand about these three factors, which actually affect the controlled standardized lighting conditions in a color matching cabinet. These three are very important things and you must all understand it. Yeah. The color temp the first is color temperature Kelvin. And I have, I have shown you a beautiful chart in which we saw right from 2000, 2600 from a yellow light, it kept on becoming, you know, a lighter. And then 6,500, it, it, first it became neutral. It was warm, you know, and then it became neutral and then it kept on moving towards it so that so that we can all understand how important is the Kelvin. People may not understand from warm to the neutral, to the cool, and to the colder one or the cooler one, right? So we all understood about that. The color temperature is very important. When we say D65 light, it says 6,500 Kelvin, right? When we say... Uh, Cool white, it, it says 4,000 Kelvin. When we say 3,000 K, and as Mandana was saying about 3,000, 3,000 is, it comes in the warm white, right? So warm white is, or U30 is 3,000 Kel K, Kelvin. Please understand, this is a very important thing. The second thing which is important is the lumens or the lux level. You know, the lumens is when, when you, when you, See the in the color matching cabinet, there is a 45 degree angle, you know, stand which is provided so that the light comes from 90 degree, and you are sitting and seeing the color, doing the color matching with a 45 degree angle. 
Now in that, what happens is when the star uh, light starts emitting from top, it is lumens. Yeah, when it starts from the tube, it is lumens. The moment it comes down and it touches the floor or it touches the sample, we we record it as lux lux levels. So you should understand the difference between the color temperature as well as the lux level. Lux level is the brightness or the intensity of the light. So a higher lux means brighter light. So please understand this also. This these three things are very important. Color temperature, and lux level, and the last one of the least is CRI, which is called color rendering index. Now, color rendering index tells you about the quality of the uh, lamp which you're using. Uh, I'll, I'll take a very simple example. Uh, it is taken from 0 to 100. The measuring index is 0 to 100. 100 being the perfect exact match. Now, when we do the matching at D65 light, it should be it should have a CRI of 90 plus. Only then it can give you accurate matching. If it is less than that, the matching will not be perfect. Say we also use the tube lights in our homes. Yeah, that is also D65 light. But in that case, the CRI is just 54. But the same color, the light which is when it is used in you know color matching cabinet the lux level goes to 94 CRI, 95 CRI. See the extent of uh, quality which has been enhanced in that so that the color matching is perfect. You understand? The same light and, and the difference is also too much. So the home light will be coming at maybe kind of 100 or 200 rupees and that is many, many times bigger than, many, many times higher than that. The actual light in which you can do the color matching. So color rendering index is, is, is the one which denotes the actual quality of the light. Uh, in, a, in a good color matching box, most of the lights will be having CRI of 90 plus. The, although TL84 light has a CRI of 80 plus, but the new lights which have come now, they are all coming with 95 plus. So these three concepts, my friends, you must understand because you should know what is the Kelvin temperature. You should know what is the lux level where the light is coming. And also the color rendering index. I, again, it was very important for me. So I thought I must you know, give this particular knowledge also to my viewers. It was very important. Now we, now we go to the next slide, please. Yes, we will be checking about uh, what is the future. Uh, all the audience here are you know, uh, people who are intelligent. We all understand that from fluorescent light, we are all moving towards LED lights. Yeah, In our homes also, we are changing. In our showrooms also, most of the things are changing. Why? Because less energy consumption is there and the cost is also, uh, lower repair cost is there and maintenance is too less. All of these things are, you know, forcing us to change from fluorescent lights to the uh, LED lights, which is the future. Okay, because the LED technology is a is a beautiful technology. You can just see they are, it has it is giving you the spectral color distribution of a five thousand K. And I believe most of our viewers know what is a five thousand K now. They are all they have understood it very well. Five thousand K is the color temperature. Yeah. Now see the spectral uh, color distribution of a five thousand K LED lamp. How smooth it is. And in a fluorescent lamp, which is a normal lamp, how uncertain it is. It goes up and then come down, goes up and come down. So uh, my friends, please understand the future of the color matching technology will also totally shift towards LED technology. Although they are still working on it, but this is the future. Now let's go to the next slide, please. So this is everything about where we are moving. Uh, you know, we are, we are even taking care of the AI, artificial intelligence in this. We even have color matching cabinets in which there are specific sensors which keeps on checking the lux levels of that. And then we also have the QC version software. The software itself does most of the matching by itself and then gives you the ultimate result. And, and the best and most beautiful thing is 
that most of these things are moving towards IIoT models. So in case you are here or you are, you know, sitting somewhere in America or in England, anywhere anything is happening, you are well aware what is the matching in my first lot, second lot, third lot. It is all coming in your uh, in a mobile phone because we are all connected through internet of I technology, right? This is the most important thing. And then the time is going to come. I don't know when the machines will be doing most of the color matching and they will be doing it perfectly well, as good as human eye. You can see a spectrophotometer here. Now they're trying to, with the artificial intelligence, they're trying to make it so closer to the human eye that uh, the time will come when everything will be done automatically. Not now, we will, with the artificial intelligence based spectrophotometers, can detect and change the color difference at the time when the dyeing is being going on. And because this will happen automatically, so you may be at any part of the world, all the information will reach you through IIoT Gateway. So things are moving at a very fast pace, Gagan. And I may say that uh, the future of color matching is very bright. It is going to make our life much, much easier, provided we have the basic concepts clear in our mind. And in this small time of about 35 minutes, I've tried my best to give all the aspects of color matching. And then if, if you want anything more, you're always welcome to send us an email. And I think my colleagues can give you that where we can actually see uh, how we can help you in every possible question or query, query which you have, which we'll be doing now as well. But the future is becoming brighter and brighter with, you know, beautiful color matching concepts which are coming on IIoT and software-based things. Kevin. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manjeet, for uh, sharing such detailed knowledge about how we are going to go forward. Manjeet, one last question uh, before I start taking uh, uh, the questions from the audience. Uh, how is, uh, I see and you've given a lot of knowledge about uh, color matching today uh, and we will be taking more questions. How is Paramount making a difference to the overall scenario on color matching? Uh, as far as we are concerned, what we're trying to do is, uh, Mr. Kundu was asking me uh, something about delta value as well. Uh, I think we will be covering that as well. There is no problem. I have got so many things to cover that if we sit here for about next five hours, I'll keep on giving whatever small I have learned You know, in these last 20, 25 years. We'll be covering that as well. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Yes. So what we're trying to do is at Paramount, in whatever small contribution we're trying to do is we have got different tools with which we can do, you know, perfect color matching, right from color matching cabinets, which are uh, normal ones, which is standard one of two feet, and even a smaller one, which is a portable one. Sometimes you need to carry the color matching with you, which is only one feet. Even the industrial models we have, which is four feet. And then we have gloss meters, we have, you know, different uh, things like spectrophotometer in which all the delta values, delta A, delta, everything is taken care of by itself. Uh, Mr. Gundu, delta value is the average of the uh, ABC, you know, concept with which the delta E when it comes, it averages out all the things and then it gives you the exact thing. What is the difference between the original color and the 10 samples or 10 lots which you're checking. So in a spectrophotometer, when we set the delta value, then what happens is we say this delta value with plus minus 0.5% with from a standard, you know, from the thing with, from which we are doing it, as you set the machine, then you keep on moving from one lot to the other and it keeps on saying pass, pass, fail, pass, fail. So regarding our contribution, we are working towards software-driven things as well. We are coming up with the LED, uh, you know, point of sale lights, which have got, uh, you know, CRI value of more than 95 to 97%. And although the TL84 light has got a CRI, CRI of 80, but we are coming up with, you know, LED lights with a CRI value of more than 95. We are 
working with you know industry enabled things so that wherever you are maybe if you are in a lab or you are outside the lab you know what is the value which is coming and how quickly you can see things happening at different places you know without even moving at a place everything is coming in your uh, mobile phone so we are working on all of these applications and all of these spheres and domains so that we can provide the best possible solutions to all our excellent customers and we are so happy we got more than 58000 customers across the globe and uh, we feel so uh, you know lucky that we are in a position to serve them all with our latest possible you know innovations which are trying to do on their behalf <laughs> super thank you so much manjeet about uh, making this presentation and also sharing uh, how uh, we can actually uh, how our paramount is making a difference for that matter uh, that is really really wonderful so manjeet now uh, you as you mentioned rightly mentioned we've now been speaking for about 40 minutes after we started the presentation and uh, it is now time to take uh, a lot of questions which is there first of all i would still like to say that uh right now uh, more than about 100 people are in the room and they have been here with us patiently listening uh so uh, thank you so much for doing that i certainly hope that this particular session so far has been valuable to you while the session is still half i would say because the questions which come up and the questions have already started coming up will now be answered for each one of them right uh before i actually move ahead i would request uh our team to please uh, uh i would actually maybe uh put in a poll at this moment uh to check from everybody that how was today's webinar for you so if you see at this point on your screen or uh, there must be a screen uh, icon which must be appearing which is called as polls right so right now please uh go ahead i see people have already started uh answering it uh, all of you please answer wh whether this session was has exceeded your expectations has met your expectations was good or needs improvement please give your honest and genuine feedback here because what we want is that with these we can actually improve it further and give you ever growing value so i see that uh, 57% of the people have already voted uh, on this i'm going to give you about 5 more seconds it's already about a minute that i have launched this poll uh, and i will close this poll and so that it can give us a uh, feedback right great uh, all right i'm going to end this poll now uh, thank you so much everyone for sharing your feedback and uh, Uh, and and then definitely uh, what we are now going to do is to start taking up the questions uh, and i would also request one more uh, thing for you uh, at this point i would request uh, uh, our team member uh, shresh to please put in uh, the uh, google review link uh, on the on the chat please uh, there you go shresh our uh, our our team member is obviously definitely very very prompt now you see friends there is a link which is appearing on your chat box all, all what you have to do is uh is simply simply uh just click on that link and uh, review us if you like the session simply click on the link and leave a review for paramount uh that uh, that uh, about paramount you can mark a five star to us give a five star rating if you have liked this particular uh, session for us uh, of us so uh, while the link is uh, still there i would now request two more things uh one because we are coming up or we have come up with a series of webinars in case you want to know anything more about the textile industry like we have done a session on fabric inspection today session was on color matching what are your topic of interest kindly put it on chat box for us we will make a note of those topics and we are going to prepare something very very interesting a q and a sessions like these which will be uh, which will help you know more as you as i can already see some of the people have started putting messages uh, and uh, in the in the group 
please type in share your love by sending messages on the chat box if you have liked the session please say it that you liked it if you need some more sessions please mention the topic on the chat box we will be very happy to bring those topics uh, for you now uh, manjeet while people are talking about while people are uh, either sending appreciation or their uh, new topics i want to start taking up the questions on the on the chat box or on the group now uh, at this point all of you uh, can also please uh, send out a message in case you are not able to find a q and a box write down your question in the chat box we will not lose it at this point of time right uh, okay so uh, mr alok kumar sharma asked about cri which you kind of already have informed uh, i think the question came in before you had spoken about cri uh, manjeet so oh. that question has been taken care uh, and uh, mr rajiv sharma asks when to change bulbs of color matching cabinet i think he has a uh, uh, a question when do you yeah. really change the bulbs of the color matching cabinet thank you so much rajiv ji for asking this question it's a very valid question let me tell you although we may say you know that there are different light sources who, who have got a specific you know life sometimes we say it it goes all the way to 2000 hours some of the lights will be you know used for about 600 hours and you know to make the things very very simple for everyone what we recommend or even the foreigners recommend is every 6 months if you can change the complete lights of your color matching cabinet you will ensure that the cri is perfectly okay the temperature now you all know about the lumens temperature is perfectly okay and the intensity of the light is also perfectly okay so the thumb rule now which is becoming is every 6 month you if you're using it very very nicely and perfectly 6 months is the time when you should change the complete set of bulbs and tube lights else if you're using it very scarcely like very very in less way one maybe one half an hour or one hour you can even go to one year but not more than that though although our cabinets have got you know the hour meters which are telling about each and every light but please remember my friends 80 to 90% of the color matching is done in the d65 light please be very particular about that because when the light is used its intensity or its uh, capability of giving excellent colors it reduces down slowly slowly so uh, to answer the question 6 uh, months to 1 year is the maximum time and uh, then you can you can be rest assured that your color matching cabinet cannot be challenged in any way thank you wonderful thank you so much uh now i see uh, manjeet as expected there are a lot of suggestions coming on the chat box on what kind of sessions can be done and should be done uh there is a session which has been requested on color fastness uh, uh they need in depth knowledge about spectrophotometer and various color fastness methods uh, at this point uh if one any of you have very specific requests uh, i would request uh, our team uh, shreesh to please put in on the chat box Uh, your uh, uh, our dedicated contact number and email id so that uh, some of your some of these people can connect with us and our technical team can actually help them uh, with any knowledge you need uh, with related to that our team is always willing to help so please uh, fresh put in the chat box uh, our contact details so that we can take things forward right uh, now manjeet there is another question uh, mr alok kumar sharma said Uh, that cri of x rights spl3 cabinet is usually 90 to 95 that means we can see color up to 90% accuracy with respect to human eye what is the cri of a paramount booth that is a question asked by mr alok kumar sir thank you so much alok ji i really want to thank you because you've always been very very active and we always enjoy your company when you come to our uh, you know sessions now they are saying that their uh, cri is 90 to 95% in regard to our cabinet as well as uh, alok ji we don't have any choice my friend it is not that we they can have 95 we can have 85 it is not there if they have 95 we also need to match with them or with the same cri index 
that is very important color rendering index has to be as close to one as possible that is 100 right so in our case as well there are some in fluorescent uh, you know tube lights we don't have that much of uh, uh, probability that we can increase it to that that is the reason why most of the you know lights are being you know changed into fluorescent uh, from fluorescent to the LED or filament lights so that we can reach as close as possible. In our cabinets as well, sir, you will always find the uh, the basic light, which is D65, matching more than 1995. In TL84 light also, you might have seen, we have come up with the POS, point of sale light, which is LED. We have even crossed 95. Sir, we have reached to 97 now because we have got excellent vendors for working with us continuously. So there can, there can be no difference. Sir, if they have 10,000 units, we also have the same number of units. So we cannot have any kind of difference coming from there. That is why whatever is the standard says, you know, if the D65 has to have 95, we have to match 95. So there cannot be no difference. We have the same CRI index, same temperature levels, and in fact, same intensity, lux level also matching with the thing. Otherwise, if you match in the X right and you'll match in the paramount, the difference will be there. And we cannot let this difference happen because if our customers will, uh, you know, in a, in a problem then. We have to match that. So, sir, we have Wonderful. same thing. Yeah. Wonderful. Mr. I think Jasmeet Singh says the question, uh, what is the standard temperature for QC measurement of color matching? Standard temperature? No, no, no. It, the temperature is always with the light. Oh. Uh, if you say, if you talk about, you know, a color, uh, you know, in a textile lab, then the set temperature is in the whole lab, that the atmosphere has to be 22 plus minus one degree temperature. And also, not only temperature, humidity also has to be maintained, which is 65% plus minus 2 to 3%. That is the standard atmospheric, temp, uh, you know, uh, conditions in which all the color matching, all the testing, all the physical tests needs to be done. In regard to the temperature of the lights, you know it very well now. You know it is from 2000 to even 10,000 Kelvin temperature. Yeah, you, you know it well now. Super. Thank you so much. Uh, now I see a lot of people. Uh, Tamil Selvan Muthuswami says, thank you so much for a wonderful session. Uh, Techno Spark 8 Pro says, very like. There is a topic request from Suleiman Kundu who says, next topic is, uh, if you can, please, on color fastness. So there, are, there have been requests coming. So just see, Manjeet, if you can plan that. Uh, yeah. So uh, another question. Uh, now, there are two questions actually from Rajiv Sharma about uh, how uh, spectrometer can help in color matching. And Jatinder Sehgal has also written a se secondary question, is spectrophotometer reliable? So I would say, uh, Manjeet, why don't you uh, requ uh, answer both the questions together yes. that Rajiv Sharma and Jatinder Sehgal about the uh, spectrophotometer. Okay, perfect. Perfect, Rajiv Ji, once again, thank you so much. And Jatinder Ji, to you also, thank you so much for that. Please understand, my friends, we see our world with our own eyes, okay? So when we see the world with our own eyes, we try to do the matching with our own eyes as well, right? Now, the only thing is, when the person who is doing the color matching, he doesn't have the knowledge about, you know, which we just shared about the color temperature, about the uh, intensity, about the CRI, then there may be a problem that the color matching may not be accurate yeah but friends please understand we see everything with our own eyes right the whole world we see with our own eyes now in order to make sure that this particular problem doesn't happen the the world has moved down to the spectrophotometers yeah the spectrophotometer is also a, an eye it's a it's a it's an intelligent eye in which they have tried to put in all the things which goes in our mind. It goes in that spectrophotometer as well. But please know one thing. I have seen many times because I get the opportunity to go to so many dying houses. So many of our customers are there. Many a times the problem starts happening when in a color matching booth, 
you see a lot of three different lots. You know, you can see them in a different way in the color matching light. And then when we start putting it under spectrophotometer, they show different results. So this is what I was telling you. We, we along with many you know, people are working on this, that spectrophotometer should be equivalent to the human eye. It cannot happen overnight. It can only happen with artificial intelligence. It can only happen with the latest technology which is coming. That's the reason why most of the time we will rely upon our own eyes doing color matching in a controlled environment, which is a color matching booth. Most well, of the time we will do that, right? But in case the thing, we don't have specialized people, we, we have untrained people who are unable to do that particular thing, Sometimes the, the people will say, you please use this particular thing. In, in regard to quality control, I'm saying, that is called QC. There are two different ways. One is the QC, in which we do pass-fail, pass-fail, it's not a lot, derived to the name is wrong. That is one thing. Second is recipe making. Now, the recipe making has to be done through the spectrophotometer, the bigger one models, because otherwise, it will be very difficult for us to keep on adding the colors and trying to change the colors. It, it will become very difficult for us. But the fabric or the garment or the small lots can beautifully be seen with our own eyes. And we can see how much difference is coming in an Inca light or how much difference is coming in a D65 light. So it depends, you know, both of the things are quite good. But the more advancement happens, in the spectrometer in, in the times to come it's only then it can match to our basic eyes color matching system it will take little more time unless and until we have this industry 4.0 working on the machine learning working on the the complete system of you know matching all the things it will take some time but most of the time the smaller exporters will always have a color matching booth and it works beautifully well when a person is trained to how to do the color matching. Right? Both are perfect in their own domains. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much, Manjeet, for uh, sharing this. There is a suggestion from Mr. Alok Kumar Sharma about a, pot a potential seminar on testing of lycra fabrics and seam slippage and seam strength testing of woven fabrics. So, uh, again, a request which has come that this kind of thing. What, what uh, Alok ji is saying is perfectly well because the Lycra has, you know, gone into each and every fabric in such a way that mm. even our jeans or any kind of, even even the coat I think I'm wearing, it also has got a Lycra in it now to, to provide us a comfort feel. So this is a very important thing. We need to understand about Lycra, how it is affecting the whole thing and also the seam slippage. It is perfectly a very, very valid thing which he wants to have. All right. Uh, okay. So another question uh, is uh, uh, regarding your uh, uh, Mr. Alok Kumar Sharma only says what Paramount is doing for approval of their light boots by global brands. Again, a beautiful question. Uh, Alokji, I think the time has come that we need to make sure that uh, uh, our color matching boots also comes into the manuals of the big buyers and they say, you know, you can have it from say very wide or you can have it from x right or you can even have it from Paramount. We are working on it, sir. Thank you so much for bringing this up. And uh, we need to make sure uh, we can, uh, you know, give a very a good price of to all the matching boxes which will be available with us. Uh, vis -a -vis, uh, they are available, uh, you know, internationally. We are working on it, sir. We'll, we'll soon be, I think, uh, successful in doing this. And then we can, we can have many, many more people coming to our fold. And we will love to uh, touch the many, many big exporters as well once we come into this. Wonderful. Okay. Uh, I'll take one more uh, question from... Uh, there is a question in uh, uh, the chat. It says some of the colors, delta value, this is from Sudhakar Satya Murthy. Some of the colors, delta value is okay. But visually, shade is different. What can we do? Uh, this is again a very good question. This is what I was telling you. 
when you are seeing it under the color matching cabinet, it looks like to be quite okay and good. But the moment you start checking with the spectrophotometer, which gives you the output in delta value, then it says, you know, that the variation is there. So I can only say that uh, the, the place where it is going, your garment or your home furnishing thing on which you are testing, on which you are doing it in color matching or in spectrophotometer, they will normally be viewed with the eyes. Yeah, people will not be carrying a spectrophotometer in their hands, okay, whether I should, should, should I purchase it or not. So in a way, if the difference is not too much, See, uh, the colors, they are very, they behave in a very different way. Please understand. To a machine, the color will look in a very different way because we need to see at which angle, 8 degree angle or 20 degree angle, from where it is reading the thing, the machine is reading. And when we are seeing from our own eyes, we are seeing it from a very uh, universal point of view because we are seeing it from a different angle. So this thing will always happen. Try to correlate it as much as possible. But in our case, we have seen our exporters, they give preference to what we see with our own eyes, how much it is matching. They give preference to that, then the spectrophotometer. That is the reason why I'm saying that more and more artificial intelligence has to go into these spectrophotometers to make them as nearer to, our, to the eye as possible, right? Well, I hope I could answer the question. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you so much. Uh, so Rajiv Ji has asked another question. How color matching cabinet can be calibrated? Uh, another very nice question, you know. Uh, Rajiv Ji, we have a very specific system of calibrating the color matching booth. See, uh, the thing is, we will be seeing the samples which will be matching in the color matching booth at different points. Something Sometimes it will be bigger, sometimes it will be smaller. So what we do is we have a nine point calibration system in a color matching booth. So all the nine points, they will be keeping the lux meter so that they can understand that how much is the lux which is coming on the extreme corner left side, extreme corner right side, so that wherever your sample is there, it will always get the right kind of lumen uh, lux levels, right? That is very, yeah. very important. And the other thing which is important is the lights from where the colors are coming, they should always should be used not more than six months to one year because if they are used more than that, the color, uh, you know, the color which is coming out becomes dull. So the CRI also becomes lesser. Even the intensity becomes lesser. So all of these, considering all of these things, it is very important that please get your color matching booths calibrated from time to time. At least once in a year, it must be calibrated so that you are completely sure that the intensity of the whole base where the things are being done or on the table is perfect. The CRI index is also perfect. And also the other things, you know, which are uh, the cleanliness of the whole thing. It doesn't have any external factors in that. All of those things needs to be taken care of. Then the, uh, the particular, you know, Calibration is done, and then only we issue a certificate which is valid for a one year time. Right? Super. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mujiji, and thank you so much, Rajiv, for asking this question. Uh, Rajiv Joshi asks a question. Uh, Mr. Mr. Joshi says that printing ink matching is it possible in spectrometer for a spectrophotometer? Yeah. Okay. Yes, definitely it is possible, Rajiv uh, Ji. The thing is, for that, you need to have a special uh, arrangement on which, you know, the ink is put into a, the container and the spectrophotometer goes up, you know, and then it will read the whole thing. So it, that comes in the liquid category, right? It can definitely be done. But normally, what we do is, we normally use, you know, the spectrophotometer on a paper, colored paper, or we use it on a colored fabric or a garment. But definitely, the liquid thing also can be done because there's a special attachment which comes with which you can put the, the liquid comes in that pot and then the spectrophotometer goes there and it reads very beautifully the whole thing and it gives you all the delta values. Wonderful. It is there. All right. Okay. 
Mr. Alok Kumar Sharma asks the question: the background color of light booth. Yeah, again an intelligent question. Uh, uh, Alok ji, please keep on asking. You know, because you are doing good to everyone. Uh, background color. You know, the, if I if I say the whole world is divided into di two different parts. Yeah, one is the Europe where we export things, and one is America, right? Now the the Europeans they normally use N five as the Munsel color, which should be the background of the, which should be on the walls of the color matching. Whereas in case of America, it it has to be nine, nine uh, Munsel N seven, which is little lighter shade of that. And I may tell you, friends, please understand. Not only the uh, walls, the color matching cabinet should have N five or N seven, but the all the walls in the room where the color matching ca cabinet is there should also have the neutral gray color. And if you can't make it, then what you do is please see the color of your color matching box and ask the person to get the color matching to that, and they should be put on the. Walls. Even people go to the extreme case of put, making walls black, so that there is no external light which is coming. So N seven, my friends, is all for Europe, America, and N five, little darker tone, is all for the uh, Europe. Right. This is the wonderful. Point. Thank you so much, Manjeet. Uh, one more question, which is from Mr. Jatinder Sagal. He yeah. says, "Can you please suggest something to increase our color sense?" Uh, Mr. Ji, the thing is, Mr. Jinder, you are saying, na, he is asking question. Yes, the Mr. Jinder cycle. Jinder cycle. Jinder Ji, the only thing which we can do, my friend, to uh, you know make your sense, uh, you color matching sharper is gain knowledge. Nothing else. Do as much testing as possible when the testings are happening in your lab. That is one thing. Secondly, try to learn everything as much as you can. From YouTube or from this kind of you know uh, sessions and seminars, only these things can make your sense very very sharp, right? Else, I also know you know there are sir AATCC which also conduct some courses where you know wherein you can learn you know how to do the perfect color matching. They they do it and if you write AATCC dot org, you will definitely go to their website and there you can find. Many more interesting things, even color fastness things. Also, our persons can get even color matching things. A lot of things are available on that website. So please go there, and if we can be of any help, we are always there with you. You can always send us questions. We will try to give as much information as possible to you, G. Right? Wonderful. Uh, I would request Shreesh, uh, you can kindly please uh, put your phone number and uh, email ID in one message again, so that people can actually have a, a look at it. And they can save it to reach out to us. Uh, Rajiv Sharma ji has asked one more question, which is related to a previous, the just previous question on the color sense. He says in cabinets we are facing problems that trained persons have different opinion of color matching. Can this problem be resolved? Definitely, sir. You get those those people in my inner sessions. We'll try to make them all you know think in the same way. This is very very important. <laughs> Because the thing is, see, every person has his own perception of the colors as well, and mm -hmm. every person with own experience of working in specific, you know, companies, they carry their own mindsets. But my friends, these kind of things will not last longer because the whole world is becoming uniform in regard to anything, in regard to wherever we are, in regard to the calls. In you see any. Uh, sphere or area of your life, we all have to think in the uniform way. If we all want to make this world a small village, you know whether how do we see? I think we all need to see in the same way. How do we do the testing? We need to do it in the same way, following standards. What temperature and humidity, uh, you know, we keep in our labs? It has to be same anywhere because otherwise, in Australia, the testing done. Or in America, the testing done, or in England, the testing done, the results will be different. Mm. So we need to have the uniform system so that anywhere we are working, it is giving the same measurable and comparable results. It is very wonderful. Important. Mr. Ravi Kirthi Rao uh, says, I think he is asking it for a previous question. Probably was answered. Uh, 
Hyde, you meant to say that the CRI, I think it was CRI, you meant to say that the CRI value vary from booth to booth? Question mark. Uh, no, no, it doesn't vary from booth to booth. It varies from light source to light source. If you take the light source of a uh, lesser, uh, you know, economical one, if you want to say, for example, the something is costing about 3000 rupees. Or, this is an example. And you you say, how come you know, this tube light can be 3000, man? We're getting the same tube light for 200 rupees or, or 500 or 700 rupees. It is not that the CRI can be different from booth to booth. It is the light which the booth is using will makes the will make the CRI of different uh, color matching booths different. If you take it from a standard company, which understands the meaning of CRI, which understands the meaning of intensity, which understands the meaning of uh, color temperature. See, that is why uh, that is why buyers will say, you take it from data color, the, the uh, you know, spectral photometer, or to take it from x ray the color booth, because they are convinced that they understand all of these factors. If you take it from a local person, it becomes a big problem, my friend, because if the matching doesn't happen or your, the matching is happening and the moment it goes to the buyer in Europe or in America, it doesn't happen. It's a problem for you because then they will, what they will do is they will put a debit on you. And now just saving some, uh, you know, some kind of money, which we take it from a local uh, manufacturer, we end up paying much more price than that. So for example, it's a shipment of two crore rupees and on account of color matching, the buyer says, it is not matching, I have to put a debit on you. Even if he puts a debit of 10%, 20 lakh rupees is gone. And when we were taking the color matching cabinet, it was coming out to be, so for one company was selling it for 80,000 rupees. Other company was giving the same kind of thing for 30 or 40,000 rupees, half the price. And then other companies selling it for two and a half lakh rupees. So you need to make sure whether the 80,000 rupees or they understand these things as well or not. I don't know about the 30,000, but please do not take chances. It is never the booths which has different CRIs. It is the lights used in the booths which has different CRIs. You should always use standardized and an excellent CRI lamps in color matching booth. I hope it answers your question, please. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, now, uh, let's, okay, Mr. Rajiv Sharma actually says uh, after this last question that he will meet you in ITME, India ITME, for, uh, and we'll be getting more information because I know that uh, Paralont is participating in, in ITME, which is starting in two days, and uh, Mr. Rajiv Sharma will also going to be there. And I believe so many of the industry professionals will also going to be there. Uh, during that Will time. Rajiv ji, it will be a pleasure to see you. Please do come to our stall and we'll love to spend some time with you. Right? Super. Super. Yeah. Okay, a couple of more questions. We've already answered a lot of questions and as we said that we will keep answering many questions. Uh, okay, so uh, there is a question from the name is not there, the Vivo V20236. What is uh, metamerism in color matching? I think you did mention something about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes, I had told. You so have met, already. Uh, go ahead. It's a phenomena. You know, it is a very uh, strange phenomena in which the colors, the two colors look exactly similar in one light and they go become totally different in other light. And this normally happens when we are checking, you know, two samples in a D65 light. And then we check the same sample in Inca A light. Incandescent A is, you know, something like. Uh, uh, the thing which is closer to sun, it will have much more yellow, yellow, you know, bright light in that. And that yellow light will give, will take out the complete depth of the color outside. So metamerism is always, you know, taken out or always, you know, we, you will find it out when you compare it with the incandescent A or a domestic matching. We call it a domestic matching as well, right? Incandescent A is the light which easily detects the metamerism if it is there. Because there are different pigments, there are different colors, there are different dyes which are there. The moment the dye or the pigment comes in the Inca A light, it automatically gives a very different image of itself. itself. Then you see, my God, it was completely okay in this light and it is totally different in this light. That is why we need to do these two things very, very 
uh, you know, precisely metamerism is a very important concept which you need to understand. Super. Thank you very much. And I see a lot of us, Ravi Kirti, Ganesh, Ravi Shankar, Sumit Ahuja, Rahul Kumar have started sending messages on the group saying, thank you so much. Thank you very much. All of you who I see a lot of people are still here. More than 58 people I see are still in the room. And if you like this session as well, please write in your <laughs> words of appreciation because this helps us, this motivates us even more to keep coming back with even more enlightening sessions. So write down on the chat box for us if you have also liked our sessions. It's And let me tell you, uh, we are only, what we are doing is we are only helping the community and only doing this so that the community can get better at it. And yes, as Mr. Nayanjo Desai has said, uh, please send video of the complete webinar. Absolutely, is you are in this room, you will be sent, all the participants who have attended this particular session will be sent the webinar uh, video uh, of, of, of it on the email. You will be able to see it on YouTube and Paramount Instruments channel as well. Do one more thing for me, please. As I said, please click on this link, which is the Google review link. If you like the webinar and you are saying thank you, let the world know about it. Just click on the link and simply it takes two seconds to give us the five star rating and write down very good company or however you would like to write. Please write down on that. It will be really wonderful to hear some words of appreciation. And as I see in the chat box, people are already, already giving so many words of appreciation that how they have liked this session. Uh, and before I actually again thank the audience, Manjeet. Let me thank you that you have taken so much of time from your busy schedule. I know you are preparing for a trade show two days later, yet you have taken out your time, one and a half hours and given so much of knowledge and answer so many questions of the audience. And as you see on the group, people are already appreciating this fact. Manji, thank you again for that. Thank you so much. Really appreciate Gagan. And uh, I really want to thank everyone again. See, it is it is the kind of you know love which you get. Whatever we have learned from the last 25 years, it is of a type that we need to give it back to the industry, which actually has given us so much. So it is always a pleasure. It gives me a very different kind of feeling. You know, It gives me a lot of strength, a lot of courage, you know. And I get a lot of energy when I see so many uh, people, you know, who are actually there listening and then asking questions. So we will always be there with you whenever any kind of thing or whatever we can do for you. Thank you so much. Really, really appreciate it. Wonderful. And as uh, Tamil Selvan Muthuswami asked next session about the next session, we will soon be coming out with more information after deciding a topic and our next session will be conducted in the month of January, as we have this as a monthly phenomena, we will be conducting it and you will hear it out very, very soon about it. Uh, so uh, I see people are showering their tons of appreciation on the chat box, which is really wonderful. And we are really grateful that uh, you were here with us today, engaged with us, asked so many questions. And uh, in case, since we are on the top of the hour, I would say, in case we have still not been able to answer your question, please write to us. Look at ParamountInstruments.com website. So our uh, team member has already given you uh, uh, information about our phone number and our email ID. Uh, please reach out to us and we will be more than happy to help you with any inquiries, any technical information you may have. And you don't have to worry that this, this could be a question. How will they answer? Call us we will answer your questions because it will help us educate the industry even better, which is our motive, right? That's what we want to do at Paramount. And, uh, and this, this, this tagline, as you see below Paramount, right? Your quality, our obsession. And these sessions which we are doing, it is because of our obsession to generate the prime and the utmost better quality for your products. And we will do our every bit to make sure that you 
attain that quality levels what do you say manjeet ji about it definitely definitely i completely agree we are so obsessed we are so you know obsessed with the quality of our customers who have we have learned lot of things from our customers so once again heartfelt thanks to each one of you who have taken out their precious time in listening to in you know becoming closer getting closer to us by attending this seminar or the session and we will love to keep on meeting more and more see we we are seeing you know every time there are more people than what we started with we started with 30 35 people now we are you know going across 100 now so we will love to contribute in every possible way and uh, we have we have also we'll be noting down all the topics as well which you really want us to take care of definitely we'll keep on coming back to you and this is a small contribution of paramount to an excellent industry which has given us so much so thank far, you so super <laughs> thank you so much manjeet uh, for this wonderful session thank you so much to all the audience for these wonderful questions and being with us for the past one and a half hours we will come back to you as i said with yet another session and we will inform you about it come back to us with our questions reach out to us that openly say we want this session and i'm sure if not next the next to that we will engage that session for you right thank you so much everyone and looking forward to seeing you uh, sometime very very soon thank you and all of you who are there at india itme which is happening in greater noida do visit the paramount booth uh, you will definitely be able to meet mr saini in person and along with that they, you'll be able to see a lot of our machines as well as meet our technical teams as well thank you so much and in fact uh, if you wish to we can even tell them so that uh, they can even note down uh, or we can send them the thing india it may uh, the stall number i think it should also be can also mention that which is i think uh, can we mention the stall number as well there if possible or we can send the uh, you know invitation to everyone i think that we can we can, yeah. we can actually in hall 7 hall 7 yeah it, it is mentioned hall 7 uh, yeah it's, it's, it has been there and i could see that at 7 a4 double yeah. a4 yeah this yes. is the yeah. stall number we'll be happy to have you with us and it will be a pleasure to spend few moments with you with you know our hospitality as well please super super <laughs> great so thank you so much everyone looking forward to uh, seeing you there and uh, we are extremely delighted for being here thank you thank you so much bye bye once again thank you so much bye 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 bye, bye. bye.